Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. Today, I have one of our one of my performance colleagues with me, Uday. Hi, uh, I am Uday Kurkure. I have been doing uh, performance for machine learning uh, applications, especially on the virtualized accelerators like NVIDIA GPUs for a number of years. Yeah, and of course, the area that you've been working in has become super hot and interesting to everybody. Um, especially over the last uh, last year or two uh, with some of the AI developments. So um, what are we going to talk about today? Why vSphere is the Goldilocks zone for AI ML workloads. Sounds very interesting. Let's, uh, let's jump into it. vSphere 8 offers bare metal performance for both training as well as inferencing benchmarks. And this infer these benchmarks are industry standard benchmarks from ML Commons. We have passed all the compliance tests, all the rigors of the benchmarks, and you could see the results on the ML Commons' websites. Virtualized configurations use fraction of the bare metal resources. And this is really the key point because when you use bare metal for AI ML workloads, the bare metal host is completely consumed by your AI ML. As you can see from my presentation, uh, when you virtualize these AI ML workloads, they are using fraction of the resources. So you could consolidate multiple VMs on the same host, or you could run multiple workloads. So this will increase your profitability of your data center operations. Another key thing is the fractional v virtualized GPUs with complete isolation between multiple tenants are available only in virtualized environments. They are not available in bare metal environments. Another key thing about vSphere 8 is the concept and the introduction of device groups. Device groups are multiple GPUs connected by NV links. And I will talk about NV links in more details. It offers you the flexibility to leverage the same hardware resources for training as well as inferencing by manipulating NV links within minutes. In a sense, vSphere 8 is the Goldilocks zone that combines the power of NVIDIA vGPUs and NVIDIA AI enterprise software with the data center management benefits of VMware vSphere. Dive it directly into the performance numbers. That's what we are waiting for. The virtualized NVIDIA Ampere performance in vSphere. We use the same hardware for bare metal as well as virtualized configurations. But the key difference is your bare metal is using all 128 vCPUs or cores for the benchmarks or your workloads. In the virtualized environment, the training virtual machine is using only 88 vCPUs out of 128 vCPUs available. And for inferencing, the virtual machine is using only 16 vCPUs and only 128 GB memory out of one terabyte of memory available. Virtual machine is using only the fraction of the bare metal resources. And both the systems have four A100s, which are connected by NV links. Now let's see the performance. We are going to look at performance of two very important machine learning workloads or benchmarks. BERT is a natural language model. It has 340 million parameters. And RNNT is a speech to text benchmark. The y axis here is the normalized training time with respect to the bare metal. And note that lower is better. And as you can see, both BERT and RNNT are offering near bare metal performance using only fraction of the resources. Now that you have seen the training performance in the virtualized environment, 
Let's look at how you can scale machine learning workloads with device groups of vGPUs connected by NVLinks. What is an NVLink? NVLink is a high-speed connection between two GPUs. NVLinks are in its fourth generation. With Hopper architecture, you get 900 gigabytes per second bandwidth between GPU to GPU. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see four GPUs which are fully connected, which is called a device group of four GPUs. And on top of that, you see a device group of consisting of two GPUs. Now let's look at the performance. When you add number of GPUs, again, our benchmark is BERT, the natural language processing model. Y-axis is sequences processed per second, higher is better. And X-axis is number of GPUs. The light blue bars show the performance without NVLinks. So there is no direct GPU to GPU communication. And the dark blue shows the performance with NVLinks. And as you can see, when you scale from one GPU to four GPUs without NVLink, you get only 40% improvement. When you add NVLinks to it, you get 3.42x the performance. It's almost linear in terms of uh, number of GPUs you add, number of NVLink GPUs you add. And key thing to note here is device group of two vGPUs connected by NVLink outperforms 4x vGPUs without NVLinks. Now you understand why NVLinks are so important and they are available in virtualized environment and virtualized environments offer even more benefits how you manipulate the NVLinks. Here I have shown you a device group consisting of four GPUs. Each GPU is connected to three other GPUs. This is a fully connected configuration. And this is often used for machine learning training benchmarks. Now you want to deploy your train model for inferencing. And inferencing often doesn't require multiple GPUs connected by NVLink. So let's see how you can go from the training infrastructure to the inferencing infrastructure within minutes. Now you can see this NVLinks between the two GPUs could be disabled programmatically. So you can go from a device group, one device group having four GPUs to two device groups having two GPUs. And all these two GPU groups could be allocated to two different VMs with complete isolation. And you could disconnect further the NV links and you could have four GPUs allocated to four different VMs to four different tenants with full isolation. This is the power of virtualization that you get when you run your AIML workloads in vSphere. And that's why vSphere is called the Goldilocks zone of AIML workloads. And the, the ability to do stuff like this is not possible if you're doing this in a bare metal environment, this isolation? You could disconnect the NV links in the bare metal environment, but there is no isolation. Right. You cannot run multiple virtual machines. And that is the key part. Yeah, it's really cool. Now let's look at the inferencing performance. Now you have trained your model on multiple GPUs. Now, now we want to deploy the model on a single GPU. And you could you want to deploy to four different uh, tenants, right? But let's look at the performance first, right? And again, our bare metal configuration as well as the virtualized configuration uses the same hardware, Dell PowerEdge XC8545. The key difference here is, again, bare metal configuration uses all 128 vCPUs with hyperthreading and one terabyte of memory. The inferencing virtual machine uses 16 out of 128. I'm going to repeat this. It only uses 16 out of 128 vCPUs and only 128 GB out of one terabyte memory. 
Now let's look at the performance. Performance is measured as throughput, number of queries processed per second. The graph presented here is the normalized throughput with respect to the bare metal. X-axis is the number of different benchmarks that we have used. And here you can see virtualized benchmarks are delivering near bare metal or even better than bare metal performance using only fraction of the resources. Yeah, this is really a cool result. And I think the the, the point is that the, the resources that you're not using or that you're saving could that be used for other VMs doing other stuff, either another inference VM or something else entirely, right? A different workload. Absolutely. I mean, this is going to lower your data center operation cost, is going to increase your profitability. And on top of that, it gives you the flexibility of managing your data center with ease. The key takeaways from this short video blog are vSphere 8 is the Goldilocks zone of AIML workload. It offers near bare metal performance for both training and inferencing on standard ML commons benchmarks. Virtualized configurations use fraction of the bare metal resources. You can consolidate more, consolidate more VMs and multiple workloads on the same host. Fractional vGPUs with isolation are available only in the virtualized environment. vSphere 8 has a concept of device groups. Device groups are vGPUs connected by NV links, and there is a flexibility to leverage the same hardware resources for training and inferencing by manipulating NV links and allocating different virtualized GPUs to different VMs. In a sense, vSphere 8 is the Goldilocks zone that combines the power of NVIDIA vGPUs and NVIDIA AI enterprise software with the data center management benefits of VMware vSphere. Yeah, very cool. I like your term, uh, Goldilocks zone. You, you get to keep all the performance that you would get with bare metal, but you also got other advantages of virtualization, including the ability to uh, just use a fraction of the resources, use those other resources for other things. Very cool. This is uh, this is an exciting uh, paper that brings a lot of the, the key ad advantages of virtualization with vGPUs and AIML all together in one place. So very good stuff. Okay. Uh, thank you, Todd. Yeah. Thank you so much, Uday, for, for coming, coming and doing the video with us. Um, I'm going to include links to additional resources uh, along with this video um, so people can follow up with those. So thanks everybody for joining and I will see you again on another episode of the Extreme Performance Series. Thanks.